Okay. So it's Klaus Fredenager from Hamburg, construction of Alcastler nets times Lice axiom, another theorem and anomalies. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Unfortunately, I could not come in person, but modern techniques makes it possible to participate nevertheless. So I want to talk about uh, some recent work on the construction of our Kastler nets, and in particular uh, on certain properties of these Kastler nets, namely that the time slice axiom is valid, that one has a version of Noether theorem, and one can say something about anomalies. So uh, this is in the algebraic approach to quantum field theory, which is, was uh, uh, developed by people of an older generation, Araki, Borges, Harkasta, and others. And it's based on physically plausible axioms. And it has turned out to be well suited for the clarification of general structures, particle interpretation, spin statistics connection, super selection sectors, and in more recent time, particular problems with entanglement. But it, traditionally, it has problems with the characterization of specific models. Of course, also this has to be qualified because there has a lot, been a lot of progress in conformal field theory and in certain integrable models, and also constructive field theory. Nevertheless, I think this is still a problem that uh, there's no generic um, approach to specific models in, uh, in algebraic quantum field theory. Now here we tried to use as a new ingredient into this algebraic uh, approach, those algebraic relations which can be found in formal perturbation theory. And this was started in joint papers with Detlef Buchholz and uh, continued in joint papers with Romeo Brunetti and Michael Dutsch and Kasia Reisner. Now, what is the starting point? The starting point is renormalized perturbation theory in the so-called causal approach, which goes back to Stückelberg, Bogolyubov, and was then worked out in all mathematical details by Epstein and Glaser. Now, the basic idea in the causal approach is that you understand renormalization as a choice of time-ordered products of composite fields, A of X. And this choice is subject to a few axioms. And uh, one then tries to find the most general solution to these axioms. The most important among these axioms is a causality axiom, which is very simple. Namely, it's just stay, uh, states that the time ordered product of two fields at points X and Y should coincide with the operator product provided X is not in the path of the uh, point Y. And because uh, if uh, X is space like, uh, if X is different from Y, you have always one of the two relations, either X is in the path of Y or Y is not in the path of, of X. And so this uh, time order product is almost always well-defined by the operator product. Uh, and the only exception are coinciding points. So the time order product is unique up to local counter terms. And what Epstein and Glaser proved is that this ambiguity with local counter terms is exactly the ambiguity you always find in the renormalization process. And which has to be fixed by renormalization conditions. Now this approach can be uh, systematized by uh, con uh, con uh, looking at the time order, uh, the generating functionals for the time order product, 
this is a time-ordered exponential, so just the exponential function with respect to the exponential series with respect to the time-ordered product. And here the field is smeared with some uh, compactly supported smooth density F. And the, this object is then interpreted as the S matrix, just the uh, change of the time evolution by an interaction described by this field A multiplied by the density F. Now, the idea is, this is uh, well defined as a sense of formal power series. Now, the idea is now to consider these objects as a unitary in some CESA algebra for local functionals F of the fundamental field phi. So we consider the free C star algebra generated by all these unitaries, S of F, modulo some relations. And what are these relations? So the first uh, relation is just this uh, causality relation, which I mentioned for the fields A. So for these functionals, just take the form that the S matrix S of F plus G is a product of S of F times S of G, provided the support of F does not intersect the path of the support of G. Could I ask you a question? Yes. Why, is, you know, what, why, why is this not symmetric in F and G, your condition? The, um, it's not symmetric. Uh, of course, you could formulate instead you can take that uh, the support of G does not intersect the future of the support of F. This would be the other direction. But uh, it cannot be symmetric because uh, the algebra is not abelian. So we have, an, we have a, a non commutative algebra. I, I see. The, the G is on the right, on the right hand side. Okay. Yeah. So, so, the, so, so the physical interpretation is that this uh, is some operation which is induced by this additional interaction. And these interactions uh, take place one after the other. And therefore, you have this product S of G times S of F. That's just the operator product. I did not write the star here because now these are just elements of some C star algebra. Now, uh, when we have this causality relation and look, for instance, at uh, um, functionals which have a space like separated support. Then we have both conditions. Also, uh, we have the condition that um, the, the functional f does not intersect the path of the support of the functional g, and vice versa, which means that the operators commute. So, so we already get a, a Harkastle net when we associate the subalgebra generated by all S matrices S of f. The support F is contained in some space-time region O. We call this the algebra A of O. Then this, uh, this system of uh, subalgebras already satisfies the Harkastle axioms of, uh, of uh, uh, locality. But this Harkastle net does not know something about the dynamics, just uh, sees the causal structure of space-time, but not yet the dynamics. How, how can we incorporate also the dynamics? And this can be done in the following way. Um, Klaus, sorry, there are a yeah. couple of questions on the chat, unfortunately. But uh, so the first one is about, uh, uh, so, uh, the, the addition also make com uh, not commutative the the relation for s uh, sum of f and g. Yeah. Okay, probably you. Oh, the addition is because symmetric. Uh, yeah, but 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 this holds only under this condition, which is not symmetric. Okay. And the second one is about uh, the left hand -right side again. Uh, make the non commutativity. I was just saying what Klaus Friedenhagen just said. Okay. Thank okay. 
Um, OK, so, so now uh, um, we want to incorporate the dynamics by some condition. And the condition is the following. We look at the classical Lagrangian. We uh, have some uh, consider change of the field configuration phi. This is a classical field configuration phi. We add some compactly supported uh, function to phi and look at the induced change of the Lagrangian. So we have the Lagrangian at the uh, shifted point phi of x plus psi of x minus the original Lagrangian and integrate. So we get some, some uh, change of the action. We can do the same with, uh, with some functional of the field just by shifting the argument, adding psi to the, uh, to the configuration phi. And then we postulate the following equation. This we call the unitary Schwinger Dyson equation that S of the shifted F, F upper index psi plus delta L of psi is equal to S of F. Now, why do we require this relation? So when you take the derivative of this equation with respect to F, you just get the ordinary Schwinger Dyson equation. And actually one can show in perturbation theory that this is even equivalent to the Schwinger Dyson equation. So what we then look at is the quotient algebra with respect to the dynamical relation. So we have two relations, this causality relation and the dynamical relation, and get again a Hart-Kastler net, which now depends on the choice of the classical Lagrangian. Now, but this is not the full structure because we want also to have something corresponding to the interaction picture. Actually, the interaction picture is very foreign to algebraic quantum field theory because the interactions usually are too singular to be incorporated in algebraic quantum field theory. But here we will see that actually there exists an interaction picture. And this can be done in the following way. Now, according to Bogle Dubov, the S matrices of a theory with an additional interaction V the V is now just a compactly supported local functional, can be embedded into the algebra of the original theory with the Lagrangian L by the following formula. So you have the S matrix with additional interaction V of F, and this is mapped into some element of the other algebra. And this is, there are two versions of this map, the retarded and the advanced version. And the retarded version, it's just you take S of V to the minus one times S of V plus F. So in bogle yubov in the case of bogle yubovs formula, usually you take the derivative with respect to capital F, but here we would like to, uh, to stay within unitaries. So, so uh, there's no need to take the derivative here. And we can check that this uh, new, as, as this, this map really satisfies the dynamical relation. Namely, we insert this uh, shifted uh, functional f here by psi. Then we add the change of the Lagrangian, which is a change of the original Lagrangian plus the difference of the shifted interaction V minus the original V. So we insert the definition of this retarded map. And we see that this uh, term with minus V just uh, uh, is um, canceled in this formula. So we have only the shifted V here. And then we can apply the dynamic relation of the original theory with Lagrangian L. So we just get F plus V here, but this is just a retarded interacting S matrix for the functional F. So we see the dynamical relation is automatically satisfied. Now uh, we have to also to check the causality relation. 
And so we write the retarded S matrix F plus G, uh, which is S of V to the minus one times S of F plus V plus G. And the product of the corresponding S matrices, S V red of F times S V of G. And here again, S of V to the minus one. And here we get the product of three S matrices, S of V plus F, S of V to the minus one, and S of V plus G. And we see that we need a slightly different uh, causality relation, namely a relation where on the right-hand side you have three factors. S of F plus V plus G is S of F plus V plus S of V to the minus one times S of V plus G. And this holds provided the support of F does not intersect the pass of the support of G. Oh, this is, oh, uh, this is a misprint here. This should be the past of the support, not the support of the past. I'm sorry. And this relation holds independent of the support of V. So for all V, this relation should hold. Now, this relation actually occurs already in the work of Bogel Yubov and uh, was also discussed in the famous paper by Epstein and Glaser. But it plays not a, an important role there because if S of F is a power series in the functional F, the improved causality relation follows from the original one. But here we want to go beyond perturbation theory, and there this relation is, is really stronger. Uh, of course, you have then to, uh, to add the condition that S of zero is equal to one. And then there is a further complication, which also shows that the condition is stronger. Namely, if V, the interaction V contains kinetic contributions which change the causal structure. So if you have some term uh, with, say, with two, two first derivatives of the field, then one has to consider the past not with respect to the original metric, but with a metric, uh, with a metric corresponding to the new um, Lagrangian and the corresponding new causal structure. So what we now do is we use this improved causality condition together with the dynamical relation and obtain for each pair of the space-time and the Lagrangian a Hacker net. And the global algebras uh, um, then turn out to be all isomorphic. Yeah, we, we have seen this by this embedding for interactions which have a compact support. But using this uh, improved uh, causality condition, you can show that this is always true, that the algebra with a different interaction, uh, the algebras with different interactions are isomorphic. This does not mean that the theories are the same, since the theory is characterized by the position of the local subalgebras, and the local subalgebras are usually um, different. So we have the uh, Hakastler net characterized by, by the space time M, oh, the space time M and the Lagrangian L plus V. And this associates to the space time region O a certain algebra A of O L plus V. And this algebra, uh, the local algebra depends on V, but not the global algebra. Now uh, we can uh, um, make this more explicit by looking at the specific Lagrangian, namely the, takes the free Lagrangian. So we have some metric, takes the inverse metric of the differential of the field, minus some mass term, and we consider a special functionals, namely linear functionals. So just a field integrated with some test density. 
And in, in addition, we assume this, this should be always do that the S matrix of a constant functional is just e to the i times the functional uh, times this constant. And under this condition, one can compute the product of two such S matrices now without any assumption on the support of these uh, functionals. And this turns out to be uh, the S matrix corresponding to the uh, test density F plus G times some complex number of uh, uh, modulus one. And here the, uh, occurs some, some uh, functional sigma of F and G, which is a co-cycle, which is equivalent to the symplectic form known from the Y relation. So this is nothing else as a condition for these elements to generate the Weyl algebra, which implies the canonical commutation relation in an exponentiated form. So here we see that the, just by the assumption of causality together with the dynamical relation, the canonical quantization has not to be imposed, but arises as a consequence of the axioms. This was done in John paper with Detlef Buchholz. Now, if we restrict ourselves to this Weyl algebra called A0, then this is a well-known algebra, which is simple. And in particular, it satisfies the time slice axiom, which tells you that the algebra of the full space-time M is the same as the algebra of a smaller space-time N, which is a, just a neighborhood of some Cauchy surface sigma of the space-time M. So uh, one can ask the question, is this time slice axiom also fulfilled for the full algebra, not only for this algebra generated by S matrices with uh, linear functionals. This is, but one can uh, easily see that this is not true. The full algebra admits actually a large class of automorphisms, which act trivially on the Weyl algebra, map local algebras into themselves, and they can be localized everywhere. So, so, uh, um, so if you know the algebra at the subregion N, you know you don't know them in, uh, in other regions. And these maps are of the form that you, you uh, <clears throat> map the functional F to a new functional Z of F. The Z is some, some uh, map, uh, which has certain properties to make this beta Z to an uh, automorphism. So it uh, maps local functionals to local functionals. It acts trivially on linear and constant functionals. It preserves the support of the functional and it satisfies the additivity relation, Z of F plus G plus H is Z of F plus G minus Z of G plus Z of G plus H, provided the support of F, the support of H don't intersect. And if this condition is satisfied, then the, uh, the improved causality condition is preserved by this map beta. And another relation which is that has to satisfy is the condition concerning the Lagrangian, namely Z of F index psi plus delta L of psi is equal to Z of F psi plus delta L of psi. And this uh, preserves the unitary Schwinger Dyson equation. Then we can consider the group of all such invertible transformations Z. And this group uh, can be considered as the non-perturbative analog of the renormalization group in the sense of this original paper on original concept of Stückelberg and Petermann. So this 
group of Schickelberg Petermann, renormalization group, characterizes the ambiguity in the process of renormalization. It should not be, it's not identical to the Wilsonian concept of the renormalization group, but it's related. And uh, uh, this was discussed in a joint paper with Romeo Bonetti and Michael Dutsch. <clears throat> But here, uh, this is really the group here occurring is group um, which is analogous to the Stückelberg Petermann group. Now, uh, these, um, uh, this renormalization group can also be uh, used in, uh, for interacting Lagrangian. And actually, when I add an interaction, then I get a new map Z, Z with upper index V, which is defined by Z of V plus F minus V. And then in general, it's no longer true that uh, this map maps zero to zero. And so, so the, um, this uh, isomorphism, which I defined before, beta has to be modified and there's a retarded version of this map, which is written here. So we uh, multiply uh, the transformed S matrix by the inverse of this S matrix corresponding to ZV of zero. Now, when we realize the S matrix with index V by the uh, retarded mapping uh, as a retarded embedding with an element of the original theory with Lagrangian L. We see that this is just S of Z of V to the minus one times S of Z of V plus F, which is just the retarded S matrix corresponding to a new interaction, namely the interaction Z of V. So the renormalized interaction and applied now not to the original functional, but to the renormalized functional, which is just defined by Z with a lower index V, which is just the Z of V plus F minus Z of V. So the renormalization group changes the interaction and also the functional F, which characterizes the observable. Okay, now we want to look for further relations which we could add to our system to make our system more specific for, for a given theory. And um, one structure one can look at is uh, our um, transformations of the field. And here we only look at linear field redefinitions. So we, uh, they, uh, assume that we have n component scalar field and we act on this with some matrix valued function A of X. And actually we use this a transpose matrix uh, just in order to get the directions uh, right at the end. So this is a, a function which takes values in the general linear group, n uh, rows. And um, we get then um, we get then um, transformation of functionals. So uh, a star f is just the f of a transpose applied to phi. We can uh, then the same transformation apply to the Lagrangian, and we can apply some map to the S matrices. So alpha index A of S of F is just S of A star F. And this is then uh, just uh, by, uh, which as one easily sees, an isomorphism from the algebra A of ML to the algebra A of M A star L. Yeah, so this transformation just gives the new, uh, the theory with a new Lagrangian. But what one can do now is one can look at the difference between the transformed Lagrangian and the original Lagrangian and consider this to be an interaction called delta AL. 
And so we can use this retarded embedding to embed the algebra with the changed Lagrangian into the algebra with the original Lagrangian, written here, yeah? And so we have a map, S of F goes to S of delta A L to the minus one times S of delta A L plus A psi F. And this is an automorphism of our algebra. What can we say about this automorphism? So we take again the free Lagrangian and we check this uh, map on uh, S matrices S of F for linear functionals F. And what we can compute is that actually for if the capital F is a linear functional, then this map is trivial. But we cannot expect that the map is always trivial, or we should not expect it for certain reasons. So we instead, we assume that the map for, for generic functionals can be modified by some element of the, of the renormalization group. So we assume that there exists a map zeta from the group generated by these uh, linear field redefinitions A to renormalization group elements, zeta A, and uh, that this relation holds, which we call the unitary anomalous master word identity. And one can then see that this map has to satisfy a certain co-cycle relation. Zeta AB is zeta B times the transformed zeta A, and zeta A is transformed by an action of the of an, uh, the this field redefinition B on a renormalization group element Z. This is defined by the following formula: formula Z upper index B is B L to the minus one Z B L, and B L applied to some functional F. It's just this action B star F, which we already described, plus the change of the Lagrangian. Now, this we have um, linear field redefinition, but we can also look at diffeomorphisms. So we look at compactly supported diffeomorphisms, sky of M. They act on configurations just by composition and on functionals just by uh, inserting this uh, uh, composition. Again, we can look at the difference between the transformed Lagrangian and the original one, call it delta chi of L, and require the corresponding relation here, again, with some co-cycle zeta. This varies in the renormalization group. So uh, we can, of course, consider the group generated by all these operations. So we have a group now by the shifts psi, which we discussed at the beginning for the dynamic relation, by the linear field redefinitions A, and by diffeomorphism sky, and the, so the general unitary anomalous mass about identity postulates the following equation, S of delta GL plus G star F is S of zeta GF for all G in this group generated by these transformations. Now this identity for given uh, co-cycle zeta defines an ideal in the original algebra A of ML. And we call the quotient A of M comma L comma zeta. And uh, then, of course, when we have uh, functionals with support in some subregion O, we get a certain subalgebra which we denote by A of O L zeta. Now, um, what is the justification for, for requiring 
this uh, condition here. Now the justification comes again from perturbation theory, and that's also the origin of the name of this identity. Namely, it, one can show that in formal perturbation theory, this unitary anomalous mass support identity is equivalent to the anomalous mass support identity in the paper by Berenike Dutsch. And actually this identity is also equivalent to a form of the quantum master equation where one has to do some appropriate renormalization. This was done in a joint paper with Kascha Reisner. So this is a perturbation theory well established and uh, one can then prove that the unitary form is actually equivalent to this. So this is a motivation for requiring this condition. And then one can try to uh, understand the uh, consequences of this uh, condition. So we have constructed a Kastler net which depends on the space-time M, the Lagrangian L, and this co-cycle zeta. And the uh, big surprise for us was that actually this Karkastler net satisfies the time slice axiom. So in a sense, the dynamics is completely determined by the choice of the Lagrangian together with the choice of this co-cycle. Other consequences that one can prove a certain version of the Noether theorem, which we call the anomalous Noether theorem. And we see that the symmetries of the Lagrangian give rise to unitaries which implement locally the symmetry up to renormalization group transformations. And this might be interpreted as quantum symmetries. And in case this co-cycle vanishes on, or is uh, trivial on certain, certain transformations, then one can see that the classical symmetries really coincide with the quantum symmetries. Moreover, when one looks at these uh, symmetries of the Lagrangian, which induce anomalies, then one sees that this induces a flow of theories which can be described in two equivalent ways. One is obvious from this formulation. It just chain, uh, acts on this co-cycle zeta. So the Lagrangian is invariant, but the co-cycle zeta is changed. And so this gives a flow of theories. But one can then show that instead of this, one gets an equivalent flow, equivalent uh, flow of theories uh, where the Lagrangian is modified and together with the transformation of observables. And so this is more nearer to the standard way of seeing the flow of theories under, under some change of the, uh, under some symmetry, for instance, a scaling symmetry. Um, yeah, so, so uh, the proof of these properties is somewhat involved and, uh, I can only give a sketch of the time slice, of the proof of the time slice axiom, perhaps to make it clear what the main main uh, main argument is. So let L be a stationary quadratic Lagrangian, so free Lagrangian, time independent. We take some functional f which has support in the region uh, where, where the time coordinate t is smaller than, than some positive uh, quantity a. Then we choose a diffeomorphism compactly supported, which does not increase the time variable and acts in a certain neighborhood of the path of the support of f in the, uh, for times larger than a over two as a time translation by some quantity minus tau, the tau is some positive number smaller than a over two. Then 
the, because this uh, Lagrangian is stationary, the, the uh, difference of this action, delta chi L, vanishes in a certain region. So, in, uh, so we have the, the um, image under chi of the path of the support of F uh, in the region where T is, small, is larger than A over two. And in this region, the, uh, the, the, uh, there can be no support of this delta chi L because of the stationarity of, of uh, L. And then we can split the, this uh, delta chi L into two parts, where one part is localized in such a way that it does not intersect the image of the past of the support of F. And the other part has no support in, uh, in the region larger than A over two. And then we use some property uh, that the, uh, for the quadratic Lagrangian, the S of delta chi L, which is the same as this unitary mass about identity, and the S of zeta chi of zero, which is just a complex number. And moreover, um, in this case, also the support uh, is preserved by the, the normalization group element. So, so uh, if support F is contained in some region O, then also the uh, support of the transformed F is, uh, contained in O. And then we apply the unitary anomalous mass support identity to S of F. This is then by assumption equal to S of delta chi L plus chi star zeta chi to the minus one F. We replace delta chi L by uh, this sum H plus, plus plus H minus, use this decomposition. Then we use this uh, fact that H plus and this uh, quantity, uh, this functional chi star, uh, zeta chi to the minus one F have, uh, are causally, uh, causally uh, separated. So we can use this uh, improved causal factorization and write it as a product of these three S matrices. And we see that these, uh, the first factor is just a complex number. The second factor is uh, S of H minus to the minus one. This is, uh, has support in, uh, for times smaller than A over two by the, some construction of H minus. And uh, this is also true for this uh, functional in this uh, last factor here. And so we see that S of F is a product of S matrices of functionals with support in, uh, in a region where time is smaller than A minus tau. Tau was some number between A and A over two. So maybe uh, it's two, th two third, uh, it's just uh, a, th a over three perhaps. And we see that by this argument, the, the region for, uh, for the localization of F was somewhat pressed near to the, nearer to the time zero plane. We can now iterate this and come arbitrarily close to the time zero plane from the above. We can use the same argument for the time reverse situation. And at the end, we get the time slice property. Now this was done for the for the free Lagrangian is a stationary Lagrangian. But now we can use the interaction picture because by this interaction picture, we can, we, we know that the algebras are always isomorphic. So we can just uh, go from the, the specific Lagrangian to a more general Lagrangian and draw the same conclusion. So this is a sketch of the argument. And the argument for the, for the uh, 
other parts of this uh, relation, which I wrote here, the anomalous Noether theorem, is similar. Yeah, so you we always use the fact that because of the uh, we have a symmetry of the Lagrangian, then this change of the Lagrangian has no support in some region, and then we can split the uh, the uh, uh, this uh, operator delta G L into two parts, one in the future, one in the past. And in this way, we get a unitary transformation. Okay, now I come to uh, my summary. So we have done an algebraic construction of a Harkastler net. And we see we get a definite algebraic quantum field theory which satisfies the axiom of locality. It's just uh, by construction covariant, and it satisfies the time slice axiom. It is fixed by two ingredients a classical Lagrangian L and a co cycle zeta characterizing the anomalies. Now, this analysis was restricted to scalar fields. Fermionic fields can be treated similarly. We just have to add some auxiliary Grassmann parameters in a consistent way. And this was done in a recent paper by the same authors. Now, um, we actually know a lot about the algebraic properties of the construction because perturbation theory delivers a non-trivial representation of a dense subalgebra in terms of formal power series. We can also, in these examples, compute the, the uh, effects of scaling, and uh, we just reproduce the well-known scaling anomaly for the massless scalar field. And we can also uh, look at the at Fermi fields and uh, see that we can uh, reproduce the axiomal anomaly for, for uh, massless Fermi fields. Now, there are also some open problems, of course. Uh, so gauge theories are not yet included, unfortunately. So we hope to do this uh, in the near future. There's some work in progress and uh, we don't expect uh, uh, many problems, but uh, still it's not ready. A bigger problem is that uh, the problem of states. So, of course, we have a C star algebra. So, C star algebra always have a full state space and a faithful Hilbert space representation. So, and so far, we are on the on the, a good side. But we don't know much about the structure of the state space. And in particular, the question of its physical interpretation remains to be determined. This is related to another problem, namely, we have this choice of zeta, but zeta in our approach is completely free, it just has to satisfy this co cycle condition. <clears throat> so, in particular, we could choose zeta to be. Uh, a trivial. But when we look at perturbation theory, there's uh, the main theorem of renormalization by Stora, which tells that the equivalence class of the co cycle zeta should be fixed by the standard stability requirements, as for instance, the existence of a vacuum, KMS states, particle interpretation, and so on. So the hope is that one can characterize the equivalence of the co cycle, and this consists as uh, uh, um, amounts to some algebraic condition which implies the spectrum condition. Actually, this is an old open problem in algebraic quantum field theory how to formulate the spectrum condition. There's the uh, famous uh, algebraic spectrum condition of Sergio Doppler, and then this was more general, generalized by, by Borchers. Uh, but 
still this is some problem which is not satisfactorily solved in algebraic quantum field theory. And so that we have some hope that the choice of this zeta might give some further insight into this problem. Okay, so this is my the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. Okay, some question? Roberto? Hi, Klaus. Do, do you Hi, uh, Roberto. Hi, uh, thanks for the nice talk. It's, do you envisage any role that a split property can, can play in your framework? Uh, yeah. I, I think this would be, one could of course postulate this in addition, yeah. Um, we, I, I did not think about this, so so maybe one can, can require this. Because this is a purely C-star algebraic approach, so we have not uh, any information on the von Neumann algebras, which are, um, Yeah, but, but split property would be an interesting, interesting additional ingredient, yes. Hi, Klaus, thank you for the very nice talk. Um, I, was, I was trying to understand uh, your program from the point of view of the old constructive field theory approach. And I wondered, if you start from one of the two or three dimensional quantum fields that's known to exist and put it into your machine, that gives you an S of F. So what happens, uh, say, to this time slice axiom when you are in a two phase region? Um, so so uh, this is a purely algebraic situation so so i think you uh, the two phase region would just mean that you are um that you have different sectors yes you have two sectors there yeah yeah but but the algebra uh, would so um would be the same so you just won't say anything but you're talking about the evolution of the theory off the time slice and that would be different in the different sectors um no, not on the algebraic side. I see. On the algebraic side, yes, it's the same. Of course, uh, the state space might have a, a structure which is, um, yeah, actually at the moment we do not know anything about the state space in the, in the general case. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a question in the chat. Okay, just a second. Stefan? Hello, Klaus. Uh, hello, Stefan. Uh, I've asked this question before on similar occasions before, but since you seem to um, change your approach a little bit, I'll ask it again. Uh, so is there any way one can see things like the triviality of phi to the four? Yeah, uh, that's an, your approach. Yeah, so this is a question we also ask ourselves. So, so uh, um, so so the, the situation is you always have states. You all, so you can construct phi to the four, for instance, here, as in C star algebraic theory. But when you try to um, to uh, to construct, say, the algebra, you represent say the 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 underlying weil algebra in the fox space representation and then you can try to extend this fox space representation to other elements of the algebra and um so actually in the joint paper with detlef he did this for the quadratic functional so for, for the quadratic functional this is always possible but it's not clear that it's also possible for the other for, for more complicated functionals. So it could well be that for phi to the four, this is not possible to extend the Fox space representation. 
Yeah, you can find, of course, a representation because it's a CISA algebra, but it might be that uh, you cannot find these operators in the Fox space. Other question? Or we have a Sebastiano. Hi, Klaus. Uh, hi, Sebastian. Uh, I have two short questions I make together. So the, the first is, uh, what about simplicity of this sister algebra? I think it's not expected, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, I... No, just an, another, and we can, and the other is about additivity. There is some form of additivity at this level or... Yeah, so, so uh, the answer to additivity is yes, algebra as are additive. So you can can uh, uh, compose them from arbitrarily small subalgebras for arbitrarily small regions. In the sense of yeah. sister algebra, in a sense. In the sister algebra sense, yes. Okay. So if you have um, a union of a region, then you take the sister algebra generated and we get. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So for every covering by smaller regions, you get okay. uh, get that uh, additivity is satisfied, and the sister algebra sense. Uh, for the CISA algebra. Uh, uh, simplicity, I don't know. This, uh, that's, um, yeah, it's, I just don't know. It could, uh, because it's a specific algebra, perhaps this can be answered, but I don't know the answer. Thank you. Okay. But, uh, uh, but what one can construct by this time size axiom, you can construct the time zero algebra. Uh, so in case the algebra is not simple, this would mean that the time zero algebra has ideals. So just to check. No, I think that there is no further question from Zoom chat. So I propose to thanks Klaus Fredenhagen and Horst. Uh, sorry. Okay, so I propose to thanks Klaus Fredenhagen again, all the speaker of this conference. <laughs> okay. Thank you.